goal for today. The goal is to be out here working by 8 or 9. It's 9.01 right now, and you know what? I'm gonna call that a really great start to the day. It's like 8 degrees. I got yesterday's video all edited and uploading right now, so I think the next step, uh, I, I need to start a fire in here. Oh yes. Good to have the fire going, warming it all up in here. It's only been uh, 15 minutes and we've already come up a lot. Getting to a mighty comfortable temperature in here, just really, really cozy. I love the dry heat of a wood stove. Mm -mm -mm. Love that stuff. Let's get on to this little boat knife. All right, so what I've done here, uh, on one side, basically this is exactly how the block was when I cut it. I just took some marker and I made a couple lines so that I can always reference it and always kind of line them up again. Uh, just as we continue working on this, we want to keep that straight and that'll help make it really quick and easy. Now what we need to do, I think we need to bring these down because they're too thick. Again, for these Corby bolts we're using, I think I'm going to go 3 eighths of an inch thick and right now they're just over half an inch, I think. Okay, so this is 1.646, so we need to bring quite a bit down on here. And we're going to do that in the milling machine. And I'm going to only take uh, the material off of this side, because this is where we had cut the wood in half, right here. This is the center. And we've already trued up these surfaces. We've got them nice and flat in our milling machine. And I don't want to take any more material away from there, because the more material we take away, the less wonderfully the grain is going to line up. So we want to keep the cutting down in the center part to a minimum, so we're just going to leave that as it is. I'm actually going to hit it on this granite surface plate with some sandpaper just to get it really, really true, really flat. Uh, but that's it. We want to leave as much material uh, right here as we possibly can. So we will be clamping these up in the milling machine and cutting it down from this side. Take both of these to about 3 eighths of an inch thick. Alright, so seeing as I want to keep this grain as close to lined up as possible, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and center this blade as far as the holes that we're going to use. I'm going to center those on this wood. To do that, what we're going to do, just kind of mark a little line. It doesn't have to be perfect, but close enough. So what do we have? We're like, we kind of go from the top, just make a mark, make a mark. And then we'll go from the other top, which is this side. Make a mark, Need my little tiny ruler. That way the grain should line up and we will be uh, maintaining where we locate this thing on each block. Let's bring those together like that. Should line up quite nicely. We will center the hole right there and then right there. And then when we flip it over, We'll, we'll roughly line up and we'll be hitting the exact same parts of the grain. Sure, we're centered in our holes there. And then I'm just going to kind of mark, trace around here. And this is just for reference. Just when I'm kind of switching back and forth between the pieces. That way I won't lose track of which one's which. And then again, flip it over this way. Okay, so I think that should line us up fairly nicely. Now for the fun part, the part where we need to drill a hole. I've never, I've never seen anybody do this, but I put my thinking cap on today. So you remember from part one, the space that we'd use to mark out our tang? Well, we're gonna use that to space up this block. So basically we, we don't wanna drill like that. Uh, we, want, we don't wanna drill our block flat. We need to compensate for it. And if we go like this, let me adjust this angle here. Okay, let's see if this shows up better. So again, the spacer that we had used, if we put this under this, 
we should be able to figure out using our height gauge we kind of take a mark so we can actually see look at we're maintaining a fairly good height actually needs to come up a bit more so that's really how we're going to do it we're just going to kind of leave this in here we'll be checking it with our height gauge here again like going across it like this that's pretty darn close there i'm gonna actually have to move this camera because it's kind of in the way don't want to wreck it but let's let's just try this and see if it works okay we're gonna drill it right there Hopefully that little spinorama didn't hoodwink our layout. I think we'll be all right. Again, we'll put this in here so we can locate the first hole we've done. Okay. All right, now we're presented with the challenge of counterboring. So this was the side that we just drilled through. If we flip it over, we need to counterbore the other side. And if we look here, I just put a piece of, this is just black phenolic rod, 3 16 which is the hole that I drilled. And I'm just using this as a reference, so if I bring this shim and put it about the same spot, it should get pretty much the exact same angular adjustment there. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this to my drill bit. And then I'll take it out and maybe I'll leave a little mark there and there so I know where to place it. But really I should be good to do this hole and this hole now because I've got this compensated. And again, we're just going to counter bore so that the shoulders of those Corby screws, Corby bolts, will go in there. So that's kind of how I'm figuring it out. May not be the right way, but we will find out if it works. Oh, if this works, I'm gonna be elated. I'm gonna be like, woohoo! I'll kind of be shocked. I think I'm happy. I think I'm happy with the outcome here. He only has one wing. Got him. Here you go. Again, I live a very exciting life. Highlights of my days are killing flies. Glamour, right there. I like it. I like it a lot. While I have it in this state, I'm actually gonna head over to the grinder. I'm gonna start hogging down some of the material. I'm just gonna get it close. I'm not gonna get like real precise, probably stay like an eighth of an inch or more, but that way I can get the profile and it'll be a lot easier to draw in this little detail like the end of the handle. It'll be a lot easier to draw that in if we know generally where this whole thing's going, so. So what we're going to do now, we're going to uh, clean up the bevels, maybe grip first, then we'll jump up to the Trizac and the surface conditioning belts. Go ahead and start getting this thing ready for glue up.
guys, so I want to give you a quick update on the Damascus from Alex Steel. Um, I got a call yesterday from the shipping company, and apparently it's just clearing Canada Customs now. So hopefully next week I'll have that. Also, the bearings that I ordered, I don't have that yet either. So I'm hoping, I'm really hoping we can get onto that build next week. But I just want to keep you in the loop. We will go ahead and clean this all up, sand this stuff nice and smooth and flat. Can't wait to take the tape off of it. Okay, I'm gonna let this Danish oil kind of soak in, do a couple of coats, and we will uh, check it out. This makes me so sad. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Using this to do filming <laughs> today. This this is like the 70 to 200 F2.8, the Mark II, or whatever the current version is. Oh man, look at that dust. And even this camera, there's dust inside the lens, my G7X Mark II. <laughs> That's the saddest part about making videos out the shop. <laughs> my poor camera. <laughs> okay, enough of the sob stories about cameras. Here's this part of it here. Oops, I need to clean that up, obviously. Still some tape residue on there. But that's it right there. There's the basic shape of the knife. Really pretty pleased with this here blade. Oh my word, you camera piece of crap. Really like that black walnut. I wasn't crazy about it until I put the uh, oil on it. And I was worried about a little delamination. Like when I when I was doing the glue up and when I was looking at it, I thought, oh man, it doesn't look like those scales are nice and tight. Uh, but it must have just been in my imagination because we've got really nice tight fit on the scales uh, on the taper there. So obviously we had that taper nice and flat and straight. And then at the back as well. Really, really happy with the way this turned out. It was a lot of fun. I'll definitely be doing some more tapered tanks in the future. Kind of a bit of learning to them, but really not. I, I had this idea in my mind that they're so complicated, especially the part we drill them, because I just didn't know, well, how on earth do you do all that stuff? But it, I find most things that, that I'm, I'm reserved, and I'm like, ah, how's this going to work? And I don't have a solution. Once you just start doing it, all of a sudden the solution just kind of pops out at you. And uh, that was the case with this, so I'm pretty excited about it. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. You can do that by checking out this little circle right here. And then I'm gonna put a couple other videos or playlists up on this side of the screen for you to enjoy. Thank you guys so much for watching. Cheers. <laughs>